We're going to talk about thermal imaging 101. Firefighters have to operate in a demanding, unforgiving environment. The last thing they need is something to complicate their job. Unfortunately, thermal imaging education has been left out in the fire service over the past couple of decades. There's a lot of places that offer good training, but unfortunately, this doesn't get trained on enough. So what we're doing with these series of videos is giving you short educational bits of information to help you be smarter and more intelligently aggressive. We're going to talk about things that you can see and how this can enhance your performance if you understand what you're seeing. So first thing we're going to talk about is a fire service tick picks up long wave infrared radiation. Picks up surface temperatures, not gas temperatures, and it's not a thermometer. Remember that. You'll notice with the Seek Attack Pro, there is no spot temperature in the bottom right hand corner to confuse firefighters. We're reading heat. Don't focus on temperature, we're focusing on heat. So we understand that, we're looking at surface temperatures and we understand that certain surfaces can cause the temperatures to show up differently. So if you're looking at reflective surfaces, could throw the camera off, could throw you off when you look at reflections. You can check out our YouTube channel for drills on reflections and how to overcome those limitations. And then when we talk about what the camera is looking at, you need to know how far away you can be to see those things. Certain cameras have different varying re resolution rates. This one has a 320 by 240 resolution, which by the numbers should allow you to see a small child's hand at 15 feet. We personally witnessed pick up a small child at 25 feet with this camera. So we're able to see better and we can see in high heat, we can see in low heat. What you want to understand about the camera though is this is not going to replace a well-trained, fundamentally sound firefighter. We don't recommend the first thing you do is put this in front of your face and go in and have it glued to your face. We want you to use your training, your education, and then use this as a diagnostic tool. And understand that if you use this improperly, you're not going to have the results you like. So when you go into a fire, every firefighter I know of is constantly wiping their face piece. Very few know to wipe this lens right here. If this lens accumulates with moisture, smoke, particulate, the screen will go white and you'll hear firefighters say it whited out on me. No, you caused the camera to fail. Moisture is kryptonite to these things. And if you're standing up instead of staying low, you're going to end up with moisture and stuff on the lens. When you're flowing water, you're going to have to wipe the lens. You're searching above the fire, you're going to have to wipe the lens. It happens in every camera out there. Understand the limitations of the device and how to overcome them. Stay low, look for life fire and layout, and you will be able to use this camera properly. And the biggest thing, which sounds the silliest, is you have to carry the thing. We have to get firefighters who are in the decision-making role, whether they're a senior firefighter, company officer, battalion chief, to understand this has to be attached to them. You're leaving this in the charger 50% of the time. That's what the studies show. We have to, we swore an oath to take care of the citizen, yet we leave the one device that allows us to see them faster and find the fire faster on the charger of the truck. So if your department spends good money to buy a device that can help you enhance your abilities, carry it. Know what you're looking at. Know its limitations. Take care of it. I like to carry mine with a strap, a webbing strap. I'm not a big fan of the stretchy cords, but I want you to carry it in a way that works for you. And then make sure this is mounted properly, where the person who's using it can get to it quickly. Take care of it, wash it with normal uh, soap and water, don't use any harsh detergents on it. And if you clean it, this lens is not to be scrubbed with a grill brush, so, uh, any kind of bristle pad or anything like that. Take care of these devices, they'll take care of you, but make sure you're fundamentally sound first. So these are the basics of Thermal Imaging 101. We can give you a lot more information if you go to our YouTube channel or our website, follow the links and learn more with us.